All right, so tonight we are uh, installing a uh, oxygen system in the uh, Thunder Mustang for an upcoming test uh, this week. Uh, so the this seemed like a good chance to review some of the equipment that we carry and why we carry it. So uh, the oxygen system, uh, just backing up, up to this point we've been wearing a mask uh, when we fly um, for two reasons. Uh, one is the mask itself provides a lot of crash protection. There's actually a reasonable amount of structure here. This was all sized for bird strike. And as we've proven um, on previous programs, it, it does provide a lot of value for protecting the pilot's face in the event of an accident. So that's one good reason to wear it. Two is we actually do have a small oxygen container built into this uh, Butler parachute. So this is the uh, Butler HX400 canopy. Uh, and then this container uh, comes with it a, uh, a small oxygen bottle called a bailout bottle uh, mounted in the side uh, pouch of the parachute. So that gives you about two minutes of oxygen in the event of emergency. So certainly for racing at Reno um, or for low altitude emergency stuff, it gives you enough uh, oxygen to displace any smoke that may be around the pilot's face and help the pilot get on deck uh, with a functioning uh, uh, you know, heart and lungs and uh, brain and all that stuff. That's fired uh, via this green apple is what we call it on the pilot's uh, right shoulder uh, here on the, on the shoulder harness of the parachute. So when you pull that, uh, you uh, break off a nipple uh, in, in the top of the bottle, which actually fills this, uh, this line here with oxygen at the full pressure of the bottle, but through a restriction. Uh, and that goes in here through the Crew 60 and into the, cock, into the pilot's mouth. So you may be looking at this, you see there's a big hose here that hooks up to the pilot's mask here on the Crew 60. And you see there's another big hose here. This is the hose that you normally breathe out of, and it contains a check valve, um, which uh, once you disconnect from the airplane, the check valve closes, and now this oxygen uh, goes into the pilot's mask rather than going overboard. The problem is that in a panic situation, uh, the pilot can overwhelm the flow of oxygen coming from the small bottle through that small restriction and uh, start pulling that smoke into the cockpit. But the assumption is, at least on the Wasabi team uh, part, is that uh, even that little bit of oxygen uh, or even that little bit of smoke or, or or just that added amount of oxygen is better than nothing and the, the combination of a little bit of oxygen and the crash protection is enough to, to warrant wearing the mask. So for this week's tests uh, we need to go upstairs up to uh, the flight levels in order to do a dive test and in order to do a, a cruise performance check in the Thunder Mustang obviously uh, turbo props like the altitude so the question is uh, how much do they like the altitude we need to test that this week. So in order to do that we need to install the rest of the oxygen system so this is sort of the last half of the oxygen system we need to install the rest of the oxygen system in the thunder so uh, for this kind of programs with wasabi we typically do uh, sort of a pony bottle setup where we have an oxygen system we can actually just bring to the airplane independent of what the customer might be doing or what the owner might be doing so in this case it's all very modular stuff that we can bring with us to the airplane so the heart of the system is this bottle. This is uh, built by Aerox. It's a 22 cubic foot uh, bottle, meaning that at uh, atmospheric pressure there's 22 cubic feet of oxygen in here, which has been compressed to about uh, 2,000 psi when the bottle's full. That is fed through a valve here. It's not a regulator, just a valve that just uh, dumps the uh, pressure overboard through this hose. So this is just a 540 fitting step down to th uh, half, a quarter inch pipe. Quarter inch pipe uh, through this uh, line so this allows us to remotely uh, mount the bottle through this line to the uh, A14 regulator which is uh, my personal favorite regulator there's several regulators out there um, but if you're going to use a military style mask and you want to be able to go above um, 30,000 I think I think 35,000 is the limit for the A12 and then for the the more modern uh, uh, regulators as well. So if you want to go up really high, the A14 is the right uh, regulator for you. It does not have as much of an economy setting as like a mountain high system or even the, um, the Aerox systems, um, but uh, it does allow you to wear the mask, uh, which is valuable to us. So this is the A14 regulator. You can see where the hose comes in to the regulator. We've installed a second pressure gauge so that the bottle can be remotely uh, mounted and the pilot can see how much pressure is left in the bottle and get confidence that the system is still functioning as intended. So the cool thing about this regulator is it has two functions, or the two functions that we like to use are one, 
you have just the regular diluter demand system where it's mixing cabin air through this uh, opening here with oxygen uh, according to an, a pre-scheduled gain that's set up on atmospheric pressure. So basically, as you go up, it senses, it has zone altimeter inside of it, it senses that atmospheric pressure going down and gives you a little bit more oxygen as you go upstairs, mixing that with the cabin air. So the problem is if you have smoke in the cockpit, you need 100% oxygen source. So there's two ways you can do that. One is you can go back to the green apple, which we talked about, and you can deploy the, the one that the pilot's wearing uh, in the parachute. Or two is you can throw open uh, this valve here on the side of the of the regulator, which allows you to get 100% oxygen um, and, and disperse that uh, uh, smoke that may have gathered in the mask. So for today, uh, we're going to need to do a couple uh, plumbing connections. We did most of it back in Mojave. Do a couple plumbing connections and then mount all the system in the airplane so it'll be ready for that high altitude test later this week.